Now, since the logarithm is a function, we can actually talk about its domain, which are the permissible or allowable x values that you can plug in. And to think about that, let's take a look at the natural log. And I want us to think about this. So here's the natural log. y equals the natural log of x. The first thing I want you to remember is what that means. What that means is y equals log base e of x. And that's the exact same expression as saying that log is the exponent. Exponent, I have to raise the base to in order to get x. So e to the y equals x. So if I want to find out the domain of the natural log function, what I really have to ask is, what are the allowable x values to a thing like this? Well, e, remember, is 2.71, and I'm raising it to a power. That can never be negative, and it can never be 0. It's always going to be positive, which shows me that the domain of y equals the natural log of x are all positive x values, all positive x values. So that's the thing to remember, that you can only take the log of positive values, of positive values. Armed with that, we can find the domain of any function you want. Check it out. So g of x equals the natural log of the quantity x minus 1. What's the domain of this function? Well, the only rule in town is the only thing I can take natural logs of are things that are bigger than 0. So the domain would be x minus 1 has to be greater than 0. And if you solve this inequality by adding 1 to both sides, I see x is greater than 1 which I could write that in a different way by saying the domain, all the values beyond 1 going to infinity. And I do not include 1 because I have to be strictly bigger than 1, and I do never include infinity, so that's the domain. And just for fun, I've actually graphed this function so you can see it for yourself. So the graph of this function, since we're kind of new to the graphs of these things, is actually this. I might take a look at this and really enjoy it. See how interesting that is? Notice that this vertical asymptote is now at 1, at x equals 1. And so you can see that all values to the right of 1 are allowable. But there are no red points at 1, because it's an asymptote, or to the left of 1. And so you can see that this, in fact, is exactly what we predicted by, by just our analysis. And now you see the graph confirms it. Cool. Let's try one more together, just for fun. So let's try to find the domain of this crazy function, p of x equals the natural log of x squared. The natural log of x squared. So what are the allowable values? Well, remember the rule. The rule is that I can only take the natural log or any log of positive values. So I have to satisfy that. But wait a minute. That's satisfied for basically all the numbers, right? Take any number and square it, you're going to get something positive, except for 1. Can you see which number? 0. 0 squared equals 0, and that's not allowed. So the domain here are going to be all numbers except 0. And you could write that in a fancy way if you want by saying you can take all the numbers from negative infinity up to 0 and all the numbers beyond 0 to positive infinity, but you do not include 0. But you can take the union of everything else. So that's everything to the left of 0 together with everything to the right of 0. And here's the awesome, really cool thing. If you look at the graph of this, it's really, really interesting. The graph of this, check it out. It really is beautiful. Isn't that cool? It has two wings, almost like a butterfly. Notice there's an asymptote at, at x equals 0, which is, again, the point that's not allowed. But everywhere else, there's a red point. You can get as close to the, to the left, uh, close to the right of 0 as you want, and there's a negative value there. You can go as far out as you want. It keeps going and going and going. Similarly here, you can get as close to the um, uh, left of 0 as you want because there's a value way down here that's negative, but you can't get to 0, and you can get as big as you want going out this way. And so, in fact, all the bases are covered except the base at x equals 0. Really cool. So, just by understanding how the fact that the natural log really is the inverse of an exponential function, and exponential functions can never be negative, that gives us a really great rule. We can never take the log of a negative or 0 number. So, if you have log of something, 
that something has to be greater than zero. And that's a wonderful way to start finding the domains of logarithms. Have fun thinking about logarithms. They're really awesome. I'll see you soon.